A certain purification of the unconscious is necessary for purification of the mind of wrong knowledge. And what that really means is uh, not that you will have some kind of perfect state where you have all omniscient knowledge. On the contrary, uh, uh, because of our blind spots, we have an engine of learning. And the deeper the unlearning, the more expansive one's knowledge. This is how, you know, um, you can travel both directions in life, evolution and involution. Evolution in terms of creative possibilities of your mind and body. Involution in terms of returning your perception to the natural state of the mind or one's original state of consciousness, unclouded by egotism. This is the natural state. So evolution in one direction, involution in the other direction. And uh, purification of the unconscious is certainly necessary. If you understand the unconscious as the repository and the the, uh, the repertoire of one's inherited karmas, all of one's memories, the collective sum total of one's memories in personal life from birth to the present, as well as ancient memories encoded in our genetics, transferred from generation to generation until here, just as an act of birth, we have inherited these deeper psychological forces, which are certainly much more ancient. And I certainly am not, I'm not surprised that some traditions have, knowingly or unknowingly, it's hard to say, you know, whether this was really a conscious process, but I think in most cases it was an unconscious process, with very few exceptions, perhaps, that um, they've personified these deeper psychological forces that transcend the boundaries of one's ego. And if you understand the unconscious mind as a... Um, speaking the language of metaphor and symbolism, which is why visualization is one of the most potent tools to communicate and restructure the unconscious. Uh, then the unconscious also communicates via means, the vehicle of symbolism and metaphor. So um, we can purify our unconscious in various different ways, but this is the storehouse of our conditioning and it is also the storehouse of our karmas, which is why the unconscious being a very ancient part of the psyche has a very close connection with the physical body. And that is evidenced by the fact that animal nature and uh, self-preservation, which is the instinct of the ego, is um, very closely intertwined and connected with the unconscious mind. It's, uh, these are the origins, actually, in fact, so um, that's where our animal nature comes from. And that's also because of the sheer power of animal nature. How long human beings have been evolving on this planet on an unconscious basis. It has led to this condition where it's very natural and instinctive for the mind to be preoccupied by external objects. And this is precisely why it is difficult for people to turn inwards onto the power of self-observation and understand really the truths of their own mind uh, seen under the lens of inquiry. And our shadow is part of this reposit, this storehouse of the unconscious. You could even argue that this shadow, which contains all of our repressed desires, ideas, repressed truths, which can be our guru if we approach it consciously, that this shadow is also the storehouse of much of our wrong knowledge and our blind spots. So through purification of the unconscious, through purification of the shadow, we may also purify our wrong and let go of wrong knowledge. So, um, yes, this is the importance of spiritual practice. Let's try to seize every moment to be awake until wakefulness just becomes known as one's natural state. And then karma is not a problem because karma is the world of our mental projections. And if only we can release attachment to mental projections, then we are liberated. We can be in the dream, yet awake about the dream, even be creative with the dream, playing with illusion like a magician. So uh, that's today's message, my friends. Until next time, Namaskar.